Uh, good afternoon. My name is Melanie Yassi, and um, I'm so honored to be here. I want to thank Hart Hartman, Lil Waima, for inviting me to help co-chair the exhibit at the museum. Um, he's pretty much done all the work, and, <laughs> and I get to like have my name on the book and get a little bit of credit, but he's, uh, we should give him a round of applause. <laughs> And also, we um, should have a round of applause for Lisa, who's organized this um, panel of discussions today. She's done a wonderful job. Um, I think she's not in the room. I don't see her. Oh, there she is. Oh, if she could stand up. <laughs> she, um, yes, she just made it warmer. Um, oh, that's why. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I thought I was having a hot flash. Anyways. <laughs> And also to thank Jennifer, who um, I've been communicating with over email, but I um, just met her today, and she's really great, and I'm glad she's here also. So. Okay, um, we have various artists in the room, um, and I think it's really important to recognize those artists also. We have um, Harry Fonseca, who's right there. If you could stand up. <laughs> We have Will Wilson, second row. Um, Carol Johnson near the back. Ron, wait, Ron, printmaker, fellow printmaker. <laughs> and up and coming, new uh, blood coming in is uh, Jeremiah, who's right back there. Yes. Jeremy. <laughs> and um, let me see, Glory Tahit, uh, can you say your name? <laughs> Tachitney. she's right back there. But we have wonderful people here in the room, and so I'm also honored to be in this space with them. Ruben and your friend? Uh, Lydia. Lydia, great. So a lot of times when we come together as artists, I think it's really wonderful to present to the public, but at times I'm honored that um, fellow artists take out time to come see us and hear us. So I wanted to recognize them. Um, if I've left you out, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll start. I grew up on the Navajo Reservation, and, and I always like to begin my presentations with where I'm coming from. Um, because a lot of times people haven't been there, and they wonder, you know, what I'm talking about when we talk about um, our land and how important it is to us. Um, I grew up with mostly my grandparents um, when I was younger, herding sheep, spent a lot of time out by the corral, and a lot of these um, images that I'm presenting you today, presenting you with, um, shaped me as an educator. Both my parents were um, <coughs> teachers on the reservation, my dad then became an administrator, so we were always giving back to the community, and they were always telling us, don't forget you know, where you come from. My grandmother is Thelma Baldwin. She's a traditional Navajo weaver. Um, and I I'm really inspired by a lot of her work. I try really hard to, um, when people ask me, what's it like to live on the reservation, or what does it be mean to be native? And I say, well, why don't you just come home with me? Um, so you can see I brought someone home. <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of that time at home is about sharing stories, getting comfortable with each other, and then that's one more person who goes back into this larger area knowing about who we are. And then again, they're educating other people, and it's not all coming from me. Um, this is an image of one of our chapter meetings at home. A lot of my work is inspired by my uh, grandfather, Grandpa Baldwin. Um, he passed away about two years ago. Um, I show his work because a lot of times you go, to, you know, I went to um, a Quaker boarding school on the East Coast when I was 15, and you would look at all these different artists and people would be like, you know, oh, who are you inspired by when you make your work? And I'm like, Tom Baldwin, you know. <laughs> and I said, he did a lot of work with signs. And, <laughs> and that inspired me to collage my work. And 
<laughs> you're always like writing his names out. And I also let people know that I'm inspired by um, stereotypes that are out there. And these are images um, on the border of our reservation. And what's really ironic about this is it's our own Navajo people who have this store up, um, set up near Gallup. It's Chief Yellow Horse. And he's Navajo, and <laughs> he's a judge too, and he marries people. <laughs> and he's pretty well off, I guess. A lot of, um, again, with when I teach people, um, and I'm in the classroom, I try to explain to my students that, you know, it's important to know where you come from, but it's also important to know about other indigenous people in the world. Um, so I've spent time traveling to a lot of different places. Um, this is um, up in Alaska, in a little village called Norvik, Alaska. Focus. <laughs> Norvik, Alaska. <laughs> And I spent time down in, um, I guess, in the Yucatan in, uh, near Cancun. We had a group of ambassadors through American Indians for Opportunity who went down at one point. We originally were, um, I guess, they had it planned for us to go to Guatemala. And this was the time when they were having all the uprisings taking place. And uh, the trip was canceled because they said that we might, as young ambas native ambassadors going into that region, we might be killed. So <laughs> um, they put the trip off a year and they had us go to Cancun. And we were, some of us were like, why are we going to Cancun? And they said, well, if you, if you go into Cancun because it's a major tourist place, you know, they can't do anything to you. It's a lot safer. Um, you can meet and talk about things. And so we went into that area. And it was really interesting because when we were there, um, a lot of the Mayan women, because I um, speak Spanish fluently, they were, they were saying, you know, you must be Mayan, you must be Mayan. And I said, no, no, I'm Navajo. And it was interesting because all, most of the other natives that went with us were a lot taller, like bird running water here. <laughs> and then you can see why they confused me. With <laughs> <laughs> they were just like, you're small like us. <laughs> They kept speaking to me in Maya, and I would respond in Spanish, no, no. <laughs> but again, that sharing of um, knowledge is really important. And I find a lot of times in the different places that I go, it's sharing knowledge with other women of that community. Just beautiful. Um, I've spent time in Europe. I was in. Berlin before the wall came down in 87, meeting with people in that area. Um, and it was really interesting how they had this wall set up in Berlin that separated the city. And I, you know, made me think about our own boundaries on our reservations. And even though we don't have a wall there, there is an invisible wall. Um, each time I go to different places, I try to visit um, their places that are really important to them as a people. Um, and think about what happened within that space historically. I've spent time with the Maori people of New Zealand. Um, Harry and I went there in 95. Um, we spent two weeks being hosted by the Maori people of New Zealand, making artwork, and again, um, I always try to take time to meet with the elders and learn about what they do and hear their stories. And these are types of things that I, um, try to encourage with my students when I work with them to look at um, the elders in their community, to speak to different people. This is June Grant, one of the uh, Maori artists. Sandy Adisat, one of the young students. Um, this past summer, I spent four weeks in Siberia working with Vanye. Um, he's been coming to the Santa Fe area for the past, I think, six or seven years, and we would collaborate in the shop. And this past summer was the first time I was able to go to his village. Some of his art is in the background. And we start to find out when making these trips that we have a lot of, um, a lot of things in common and things that aren't written down. Um, I could say so much more. But a lot of times when I go into the communities, we talk about how important tradition is. And I remember when I got to the community, you know, they were saying, you know, why, why would you come to Bulava? Because I flew from Los Angeles into uh, Seoul, Korea, then Seoul, Korea into Havarosk, 
then spent six days in Havarosk. I was only supposed to be there one day, but when the native people found out I was in the area, we had a bunch of people come and um, I ended up staying there for six days because there was a lot of indigenous people who came in to talk about their stuff and to share their stories and dances. And, and then after six days spent six, uh, no, 12 hours on a hydrofold bo boat going up river, it's really hard, <laughs> um, and got to Banyu's village. And it was interesting because no, not many people make it up there and they were all saying, you know, why would you come here? And I said, well, because um, when I met Banya, I said, he's come to Santa Fe, he's come to Tucson, and anytime he comes, he wants to make his artwork and go back to a printmaking workshop with the students in the village. And uh, this brings me back to some of the work that I do. This piece is called She Keeps Silent. Um, I made this piece um, at a certain point in my life to I guess um, speak about my silence as growing up and being very shy and not very outspoken. And I thought if I make this piece, then you know she's going to hold the silence, and I'm going to start speaking out about who I am and what's happened to our people and our history because we have to do that. Um, and I have to, you know, say here in public that I have a wonderful Native art supporter, Mr. Carol Johnson, purchased this piece from me um, last year and helped support me. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Um, but a lot of my work will have images of maps and layering of, of um, I guess, history in the pieces. And I guess some people might call it political, but I call it truth. Um, I taught for six years at the Institute of American Indian Arts in the printmaking department. Um, and these are works of some of the students that I had there. Again, focusing on their history and their background. This is a piece by Donovan Heenan. And he made a piece about his wife and his child and how his wife came from a different tribal group and he was Navajo and how he wanted to blend those things together in his work. And in a sense how they're kind of broken up but still whole. a piece by Daniel Perkins. Um, it's a reduction piece and he was speaking about um, it's called Sunset of My Life and when he goes back to the reservation he would think about why he was at school and what was inspiring him to go on. And He said that it was time spent outside the Hogan, you know, at his grandmother's place just contemplating things that would center him. This is a piece by Betty Clark um, who's from the Northwest Coast. It's a collagraph. She's incorporating uh, boat imagery and images from, from her people, and again, drawing on her personal history. Daryl Hunani. <coughs> Edward Lewis from Zuni. This was his very first line on cut, which if you know something about printmaking, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, I was like, go get more materials. <laughs> you need to try harder. <laughs> and the other students were like, God. <laughs> uh, this is a piece by um, oh, Jameson Banks. Ronnie Fairbanks, he uh, spent his summer working up in Alaska fishing. And he said, you know, I don't have anything, you know, interesting to say in my artwork. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> this is a young, um, it's interesting, this is a young student from Hopi. And um, he didn't turn in his printmaking assignment and he said that he was working on something else and I said, well, what is it? And you know, he said, no, it's not very important. It's, it's kind of like a comic. And I said, well, let me see what you made. So he brought this piece in. Did that sign have any significance in Hopi? I think it means peace. <laughs> 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 he did a lot of things like this where he would have the dancers making different um, faces or just being normal and he called it not serious but I thought they were really amazing 
And he was just like, well, if you like it, you can have that one. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> what, what's his name? Um, oh. Paestua, last, first, uh, last name, and for RJ. We just called him RJ. I think he's up in Phoenix now. Yeah, and he, uh, I'm not sure. He was actually offered, um, I hooked him up with the gallery. They offered a one offered him a one-person show. Um, he freaked out and just stopped making work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, they set the date up, you know, you're gonna, it's really great. And he just kind of froze and then left for a while. And, and often that as instructors there, we run into that with our students. It's that uh, fear of, of success. And, you know, we just have to wait for them to come back around and then you, you know, keep working with them. So as uh, instructors at the Institute, there's lots of ups and downs. Um, since leaving the Institute, I've come here to uh, the University of Arizona, and these are some of the works of students I have here. This is uh, Satoko Cho, and it was interesting because Satoko is from Japan, and she um, said that she didn't have anything interesting to say about her history, and um, we started talking about what her family meant and how she admired her father, and so she made this piece. Um, that's about her as a child wanting to follow in her father's footsteps and how she just sometimes wishes when it's hard that she could just stand on his feet and I thought that was a really powerful image this is uh, one of my uh, a student from Romania and uh, once again drawing on her personal history and so as an educator when I'm working with uh, different native and non-native students, I ask them, you know, to look at their own personal history and when they can understand their history and where they're coming from, then when they see other works of art, they can understand where those people are at. And I know that um, one of the things that the um, people who are organizing the panel wanted me to talk about was um, non-natives using native imagery or appropriating it. I don't run into that too much because I, my first assignment is a self-portrait where they're looking in at themselves and who they are. And um, a lot of times, you know, some of the non-native students say, well, I have no culture, I have no history, and what, what am I going to make work about? And I say, well, what are, um, you know, when you go home for Thanksgiving, is there a certain dish that's made every year? And they say, yes, you know, some, my grandmother's pie. And I said, well, if I came in and changed the recipe, they were just like, no, you just wouldn't do that. And I said, that's your tradition, that's your history. You know, is there something else that, you know, your family does, making quilts? And so we start looking at all of those aspects of who they are and then start incorporating that and putting it into the work. So I've not found too many um, people using native imagery. I think I've only run into one student here at um, U of A it was an older student who did a lot of um, paintings with natives in, in regalia. And I remember at one point, you know, I never said anything to him. And he had come up to me and said, um, how, uh, what do you think about my work and, you know, what I'm doing? And I said, well, you know, do you know who those people are and what that is about? And he said, no. And I said, well, he said, does it disturb you? And I said, yes, it does. Um, I think it's important that you know where those things are coming from and that you honor those those people and not just use it to make money and he said well what would you have me do and I said well it would be nice if you interviewed some of the um, native faculty on this campus we have some really awesome people here in the community and on the faculty and you could do portraits of them in their offices you know um, really and he was just like <laughs> I, it kind of was strange for him but I said but you would learn so much just by doing that, but he was afraid and it was too difficult. And he said, well, I'm hearing what you're saying, um, but I still need to make my work. And, and as an educator, I educate from the point of view of not uh, bashing my students, but to slowly um, help them see things in a different light. Um, and a lot of times, uh, through finding and looking at other types of artwork, it inspires them in their own work. When they hear about piece, some of the artists that we looked at earlier, they're inspired by those things to look into their history and make their own work. 
and I think they're doing a really great job. This is an etching by Caroline Kooten, who's gone on to graduate, graduate school. She's one of my graduate students here at U of A, Maria Lee, and she's um, gotten very much into um, bonsai, and so she makes work about that. And again, looking at the whole th history of, of the world and how, in a sense, sometimes we are puppets within that, um, within this world culture. And I end with this piece. <laughs> um, this piece and the next one right after. This is called Beauty Way. And it's, you know, I know it's corny. Some of my friends will be like, oh, great. <laughs> um, but as a Navajo, I have beauty be above me, below me, and all around me. <laughs> and we're living within two worlds. Thank you. <laughs>